Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. We're going to be carrying on with the exceptional story, Salon Scandal. We will be recalling the accounts. Madam X. The columnist swore that he transcribed her words faithfully. No relation to Madam Limpid. If you're chasing that trail, you could run somewhere else. Right, muttered the Tory columnist. This isn't the right place to start. He popped open his briefcase and pulled out another journal. Here we are. Since I recorded everything, it can make filing a headache. Only the truth? You think I'm naive? But I don't have a choice. You've made that apparent. I just showed her some letters. That's all. Fine. I'll play your little game. You know about the vicar? Good. I won't have to waste too much time explaining. The salon itself was a thoroughly wasted evening. I wouldn't have gone if I'd known that Duke M would be there. I can already hear the rumours, not just the drivel you're printing, but there are so many dukes and duchesses. Even the Duke and Duchess of Bedfordshire are easy to confuse. So easy to confuse, in fact, that there's some contention about who invited Madame X to the salon, said the Tory columnist. But she arrived late. I know that, for a fact. So we either accepted an invitation from the Duchess, it would be reasonable to assume that the Duchess selected the guests, or we can say that the Duke invited Madame X, but the Duke could have easily slipped a name onto the list. Let's say she received an invitation from the Duchess. Titles, titles, titles. I'm no genealogist. Maybe I'll have to consult one next time I answer an invitation. I only realised it was Bedfordshire when I arrived. We've all made those mistakes, haven't we? Said the Tordy columnist, thinking this Duchess is that Duchess. Yes, I was late. And yet I was still too early. I should have gone to the opera. I should have gone to Dante's. Instead, I was treated to the typical charming conversations of vacuous flattery. The Duchess is such an attentive hostess. But it would have been impolite to leave. The last thing I need is more gossip about my manners. Okay, let's navigate the social currents. Less predictable than the Undersea. Twice as treacherous. Duke M is a harmless old fool, now that he has no money. It's a little like trimming a cat's claws, isn't it? Portfolios like his have the worst tendency to grow back. But right now, he's down to one line in slow kicks. Mr. H doesn't have any lines. Sometimes none is better than one. I was able to pivot around his request to play cards and evade half a dozen insipid questions. I have no opinion about the recent robberies. I have no opinion about the ambassador's ball. Write that down. No opinion. Repeat it as much as needed. Okay, let's consider other matters. I have nothing against salons in principle. But principle so rarely intersects with life. At any salon, I can look forward to the same attentions. Shall we say from the most respectable, well-bred, courteous guests. At the Duchess of Bedfordshire's famous Tuesdays, I could also look forward to long lectures about boring art. Hers is an intellectual salon. Those are, without fail, the most mindless. Well, we can get her opinion on the latest acquisition. The Duchess is eternally adding new embarrassments to her collection. I know a little about art. I'd rather not know any more if the piece that she purchased is representative. Her collection is already filled with bric-a-brac, but this, this challenged me. She bought it on King Charles Street. I've bought a few pieces myself over the years, enough to estimate the price she paid. What price was that? Merely her reputation. Let's make a few friendly wagers. I enjoy a game now and again, just like everybody else. I played a few hands. Did I win? Does it even matter? We both know why you're curious about the card table. The Duke of Bedfordshire gambled that evening. He has a passion for risk. That's why he loves hunting bats. The big ones. His wife doesn't approve, but his chef 
makes exceptional pat liver pate. Of course, hunting poses less risk, only your life is at stake, with cards who jeopardize your bank account. Let's watch him play cards. The game, Baccarat, his opponent, Lord J. The stakes, significant. No, he didn't cheat. I watched him like a hawk. An eagle-eyed hawk, said the tawdy columnist. This matches the Duke's account perfectly. He lost the barony of the Prickfinger Wastes fair and square. His favourite hunting grounds, staked on a bet. Well, they're Lord Jay's favourite too, and now Lord Jay owns them. Pity that he won't be hunting much after the accident. She's getting ahead of herself, but it's true. They never even found his missing foot. Okay. Let's join the dancing. It was a waltz, I remember distinctly. Even the dancing would have been dull if not for Lady J. Her husband was trapped with the octogenarian on his card. My card, meanwhile, was blank. Or as good as blank. Don't tell the Admiral how low he ranks, whispers the tawdy columnist. Tales from the Viennese woods is not what I would call a rousing tune, but it was livelier than the debate about import tax evasion in the other room. We can dance with Lady J. Did people stare? Don't they always? I had other offers, aspiring poets, would-be painters, a countess with a great inheritance. So much potential, so little promise. Lady J laughed about it, as any one sensible would. Her laughter, of course, was misconstrued. Intentionally misconstrued by upstanding truth-seekers such as yourself. I'll take whatever compliments I can get, said the Tory columnist. People have all sorts of ideas. I've known Lady J for years, but her business is hers. Not every waltz is imbued with subtle manoeuvres. After that, we can sit down for the meal. You know how it goes, the gong, the dining room, the tedium. The Duke and Duchess of Bedfordshire lack many things. Taste, common sense, but their chef is truly peerless. His bat liver pate made the company bearable. The vicar was there, Mrs. Everson, the uh, Mrs. Carlyles. Who else? Duke M, of course, inebriated, of course, and a rubbery man. An opera hall singer past her prime, some self-obsessed social climber from the surface. Nobody worth mentioning, really. The Duchess was boasting about her salons, salt of the earth, egalitarianism. When called upon to comment, I agreed that it was rather provincial. For some reason, he didn't take it well. Politics, trade laws, international shipping arrangements. Tedium, as I said. If the Duke of Bedfordshire really did slip a note to Lady J during supper, I can't blame him. Anything to avoid the monotonous discussion in the dining room. But I only heard about the note after the fact. More rumours. So reliable. At the time, it's safe to say the vicar was everyone's primary focus. He was even more loquacious than normal. Oh, let's listen to the vicar. Nothing says a riveting party like catheticism to go with the caviar. Luckily, I don't eat caviar. When it started to hatch, the vicar had just helped himself. I doubt it was imported from the Black Sea, despite what the Duchess told us. But if anyone wants to analyse those eggs, they'll find it difficult. The vicar chews thoroughly. I'm not going to speculate. Find the maid. Ask her. She's the one who had to clean the curtains and the carpet and the tablecloth later. I tried, said the tawdy columnist, but a manager at the Royal Bethlehem wouldn't let me visit her room. Some people have no respect for the press. Incident adds interest. In a penny dreadful, perhaps. Why didn't I just spend the evening at home with some honey? I can still hear the Duchess shrieking, only the vicar's plaint hatched. But that didn't stop the other guests from losing their appetites. But more. In Duke M's case, the pandemonium was general. The accusations were absurd. The pâté was still exquisite, but it couldn't save the salon. 
Well, we can admire the acquisition again. As unbelievable as this may seem, it looked even worse. I hadn't realized that the piece could be arranged that way. Judging by her reaction, the Duchess hadn't known either. Some force, admittedly, must have been exerted. Tools might have been used. Hammers, axes. I didn't examine the damage closely. To tell you the truth, I believe the Duchess was more upset about the vandalism than she was about the vicar. If vandalism is what you'd call it. Mercy is more apropos. Well, let's report to an authority. Hmm. I never would have guessed that Mr. H carried a badge. There is no Mr. H, as it turns out, but an agent from Concord Square he is rather skilled in the art of disguise. Less skilled with real detective work. She wasted a great deal of time by interrogating me in the courtyard. Because Madame X is entirely blameless, of course, said the Tory columnist. Far be it from me to question her spotless character. But I did what I needed to do and said what I needed to say. Though she can either cooperate or she can lead the law astray. I mean, I'm sure she would have helped any way she could, right? Let's go with helped. She cornered me. I've been in worse corners. I didn't survive this long in London by telling the wrong people the wrong things. Sadly, I can't advise lying to the police. I allowed the detective, obviously, to examine my jewellery. Is it constables? Is it a choice? Rubies. Moon pearls. Diamonds. Nothing counterfeit. Certainly not eggs. I had every right to be outraged. Instead, I was cordial and compliant. As you can see, Madam X is an exemplary citizen. I'm not in Newgate, am I? The constables know I'm innocent, but the public has already made up its mind. No thanks to muckrakers like you. Now I'm honoured. Well, we can review the evening's events. Tedium incarnate, boredom beyond boredom. Time wasn't just wasted, it was killed in that courtyard. Even you're not as bad as this constable was. The moment I resemble a constable is the moment I resign, said the Tory columnist. I do have principles. She had to review everything, where I put my fork, how much wine I drank, what I said during supper, whether I had been to Cubit Square lately. Now, what else? I wonder might have been more important, more time sensitive. Lord J could probably tell you. Good luck asking him. Let's speak with the kitchen staff. A few questionable ingredients aside, the chef is a genius. Londoners don't appreciate haute cuisine. I wanted to express my gratitude. Could I have chosen a better moment? Perhaps. The grease fire did give me a pause. When I saw the knife stuck in the wall, that wasn't encouraging either. But it must be a challenge to cook for such a large party. One can't hold a little mess against the staff. That remains for Judge Wicks to decide, said the Tory columnist. Let's search the kitchen. It would have helped if I found the chef. I wasn't meeting anyone in the pantry. More outrageous slander. And let me take this opportunity to deny the ridiculous claims about my connection to the fishmonger who provisions the Duke's kitchens. What connection? A common interest in oysters? Funny thing about oysters. Think about what's inside. I've never met the man. Now, this discrepancy with the gunshots. I heard them. Everyone heard them. But did I stop to count them? Who does that? There might have been six. Then again, there might have been sixteen. It sounded like they came from the West Wing. Let's investigate the disturbance. Quite a disturbance. One to inspire headlines. This is what you wanted to hear about. Nothing else matters, does it? Not the smuggling charges, not the black market for exotic meats, just more gossip to fill your column. But I can't tell you anything you don't already know. I found them in the bedroom. I wasn't looking for them. Why, oh why, didn't I go to the opera instead? Even another production of Odin's horse would have been preferable. I should have never entered the West Wing. I should have ignored the gunshots. Should have is the cruelest phase in the English language. But take note, you'll want to print it. In flagrante delicto is the legal term, I believe. Baseborn and fowling piece represent Bedfordshire. I'm not familiar with Lady J's solicitors, but she and the Duke will need the best counsel they can afford. 
Your conniving little brain could work out the details, or invent them. We're good at that. I still don't know what was under the bed, but I'll tell you after I read the morning paper. I'm sure I'll learn what I really witnessed. Well, she looked under the bed too. It's not as if I had to crouch. The monstrosity was crawling out. Was it supposed to be chained? I can't imagine how something so big would have fit under the bed. It kept coming out. Tentacles. So many tentacles. Lady J and the Duke didn't notice at first. The room was too dark. Right up until I opened the doorway. The candlelight from the corridor fell across the carpet. And then, Reacher. No, I don't care what letters you have. That's enough. Bedfordshire tried to beat it to death with his wife's newest treasure, no less. But it still escaped. Through the gallery, outside into the garden. There, you see, the tawdy colonist had exclaimed. This is a story that everyone will want to read. The glamour, the intrigue, forbidden romance. Without finishing the account, he proceeded to bundle the remaining pages away. It's a love story, Art, he had said. Triangular, quadrilateral. What's the shape after four? Maybe that. Our readers are going to gobble this up. We have to print extra copies. Well, I guess we'll visit another account. The Duchess wasn't known for her discriminating taste. Over the years, she purchased more trinkets and treasures, but even the value of trinkets will appreciate considerably when marinated in sufficient interest. One piece caught your own attention when you heard about the upcoming auction. It's listed as Lot 77 in the catalogue. Other items in the Bedfordshire collection may command higher prices, but none are still speckled with blood from the beast that even Mr. Inch couldn't track down. Well, let's recall the account of Lady J. She provided it of her own volition, as the columnist proudly pointed out. I wouldn't mind setting the record straight. You'll have to forgive me, my poor dear. A little scene set in, the tawdy colonist stopped to explain. Still, she was still in mourning when we spoke. That veil her works. He paged through his notes to skip the grieving and get to the good stuff. We'll come to this. People must have so many questions. He goes without saying, but I'll transcribe everything. I still can't believe what happened to the vicar. He's a regular fixture when the Duchess hosts a salon. I thought it would be such a splendid party. Those famous Tuesdays, the Duchess of Bedfordshire was very well respected for her salons. Debatable, said the tawdy columnist. Well known? Yes, much talked about. Oh yes. But respected? I wouldn't print that. She and the Duke were so humble, self-effacing really. They didn't like to make anyone uncomfortable. Not all the guests had the same means, but the Duchess didn't care. She wanted to invite Interesting people. Well, yet again, let's admire the Salon's latest acquisition. What did I think of the piece? Well, it was very... It was very new. Oh, I don't mean that it was fabricated recently. Perhaps it was actually old. It, it's so hard to tell, isn't it? When you're not a critic or a historian yourself. But I mean that it was new for her Salon. She displayed it in the gallery with the rest of her collection. My husband thought she must have paid too much, because she paid anything. I told him not to say it, but there have been questionable movements on the market lately. Gossip? The assassination was on everyone's lips. What else was there to discuss, really? The ambassador himself was there. I sympathise with the poor man, but he didn't need to say such ugly things about Gloria's pet tarantula. Some people are very fond of spiders. Never own one, but still. Of course, when Madame X arrived, her name was instantly on everybody's lips instead. Not her real name. Her real name would be front page news. Well, let's go greet Madame X. I don't care what anyone says. She's a fascinating woman. London loves scandal. We all know how many are attached to Madame X. We certainly do, said the Tory colonists, beaming with pride. The Duchess of Bedfordshire was bold to invite her. But I told the Duchess myself that I was glad, and I told Madame X too. Personally speaking, I'm glad their stories are in agreement here. Life changes so quickly. If I could do it again, would I have said anything differently? I can't deny the impression she made. A smile, a poise, 
all those gemstones sparkling in the candlelight, kissed my cheek, I kissed hers. She was sublime. Let's make some friendly wages. My husband always had better luck than me. I don't usually like it when Lord J gambles. I tell him not to tell me when he visits his bookmaker. It's easier on my nerves. But that night, I couldn't avoid the card table. He was playing Baccarat with the Duke of Bedfordshire. So many people had gathered to watch. He kept raising the stakes. My husband was having great fun. But if I had to paint it as a picture, I'd dab a little storm cloud above the Duke's head. Let's watch over Lord Jay's shoulder. It was antagonizing, but I couldn't look away from the game. Can I tell you something? Something private? You would have said something dishonest, if you were being honest. I wanted the Duke to lose, because he cheated. I saw a card up his sleeve. I didn't say anything, but I saw. Must have been desperate. The prick finger wastes to think that he gambled a whole barony. And he won it at cards originally, didn't he? It's fitting that he lost it the same way. It soured the salon. Not for my husband. He was delighted, but even cheating couldn't save the Duke. Our host took his darker mood to supper with him. This is uh, different to the other accounts. Let's join the dancing. My head, oh, I'm afraid it's such a blur. You'll have to forgive me. My head is simply pounding. Uh, she proceeded to massage her temples and groan miserably, explained the tawdy columnist. Migraine, though she said. And it always flared up when I asked her about the dancing. It's the grief. I've been so ill. My memory just flickers like a candle flame. I know that I danced with someone, but it's so difficult to recall the music. Duchess always chooses a thematic style for the night. I mean, other people said Turkish. So let's just go, let's go with Turkish. Rather lively, perhaps even acrobatic. People jump to such conclusions. Just because you join one dance and decline another, that doesn't mean you're snubbing anyone. A dance like this? In a London ballroom? Asked the tawdy columnist. Let's just say that people wouldn't have to jump too far. Another hop, and we land in Mahogany Hall. I do remember laughing. I think that the Admiral thought I was laughing at him, but I swear I wasn't. I was simply enjoying the dance. I was so out of breath. Oh. She started to clutch her skull again. Oh, oh, this migraine. We can watch the other dancers. I was too light-headed. I had to sit down for a moment. Lord Jay and I quite enjoy watching crowds, sitting in tyrant gardens. A good spot. Or at the arch, if they're hanging anyone popular. It was a dandy at the dance. Lord Jay pointed out his shoelaces, how they were tied to Kensington knots. He's gonna trip. You just watch, Lord Jay said. And he did. He almost knocked out a gentleman named Mr. H. He didn't laugh this time, but Lord Jay found it very humorous. He never ties his shoes with Kensington knots. People have opinions about the most peculiar things, don't they? Okay, well, let's sit down for the meal. One can work up such an appetite at these salons. Is anything better than dining with friends? Actually, a few things come to mind now that I've said it aloud, but the meal was marvellous. Excellent wine. Imported caviar. Bat, liver, pâté. The Duchess made a grand speech about humility and honesty and art. And the vicar at grace. There was a rubbery man who struggled with the silverware, but my husband helped him cut his food. Another guest also looked rather misplaced, and frankly destitute, but the Duchess likes opening doors to the less fortunate souls. That's what made her Tuesdays so special. That's me, isn't it? Destitute. It was a marvellous meal, but I could sense something was wrong. The Duke of Bedfordshire was still glowering. Adam X kept toying with her necklace. I remember because the moon pearls caught the candlelight. Did they speak to each other? Lean over and whisper? Must have been signs if I could just piece the right memories together. The vicar was talking louder than everyone else. His voice was so absorbing. We can listen to the vicar. I'm not the most religious woman, but the vicar's words touched me that night. Thank goodness he managed to survive but he didn't recover until the next day. It took us too long to realize that he was choking. 
At the time he had coughed out the first diamond, he had already turned to the most breathtaking shade of burgundy. They were in the Pat Liver Pate. He had accidentally swallowed at least a dozen. Not just diamonds, but rubies, emeralds, other precious gems. He projected them all, along with the pate, right across the table. The poor Duchess, she was sitting in exactly the wrong place. Every seat in the house was the wrong place that night. Let's admire the salon's latest acquisition. Something unspeakable had been done while we were eating. I felt like I was in spite, staring at some eye-blistering graffiti in an alley, not standing in a respectable household's gallery. How terrible it must have been for the Duchess. Lord Jay tried to console her. He said that the piece's value probably hadn't been altered too greatly. I don't know how much comfort she derived from that. Okay, let's attend to the guests. I was only trying to help. I swear my intentions were pure. Someone had to do something. So I took the vicar aside. Everyone else was too busy pointing fingers. But now they're blaming me, aren't they? They mentioned the cassock, the jewels. Surprisingly, little had been said about any jewels, remarked the Tory columnist. But the cassock vanished. That was reported widely. I couldn't just leave him in those clothes. The maid and the butler were nowhere to be found. Let's say that she discarded the vicar's cassock? Things get lost all the time. Perhaps it was simply mislaid. It was all bundled together. The cassock, the tablecloth, the napkins, and yes, the spoiled pate and the jewels. Nobody wanted to touch anything. The vicar must have had an impressive stomach. It was so awkward to carry. To the furnace for incineration, hopefully. And I remember the stench. It's like I can smell it again. Oh, my head. Forgive me, I can't talk about this right now. Perhaps I can try to remember better, and then I can tell you next time. Lady J has declined all further interviews. Are we content to the vicar? He was sprawled deliriously on a chaise lawn. He kept mumbling about the most nonsensical things about Madame X and Lord P and all the eggs in the city. I'm certain he was dreaming. He was barely even conscious. I told my husband. He, uh, she blew her nose quite, quite dramatically into a lace handkerchief. Black lace to match her mourning, by the way. To stay with the vicar. I thought I could find clean towels, but the Admiral refused to open the powder room door. I had to keep searching. And now we have to report to an authority. Mr. H wanted to question the guests. I had no idea my husband knew Mr. H so well, but he meets a great many people through his work. If he hadn't informed me, I would have been rather surprised when Mr. H's nose came off. A woman, underneath the nose, as you probably read in the Gazette, had been investigating the Duke and Duchess for months. Would you believe it? Months! Their little salon, the centre of a nefarious web. I was flabbergasted. Let's discuss the investigation. It helps to have a well-connected spouse. I would never withhold information from the police. Ask me a question and I'll give an honest answer. I've been forthcoming with you, haven't I? Lord J hunted with the Duke. I'm acquainted with the Duke myself, but whatever Concord Square suspects, the dead diplomat in the hotel was nobody we knew. Poison is such a treacherous way to kill someone, said the Tory columnist, clucking with disapproval. There's nothing more to say, really. I don't know all the details of the investigation. Some, I'm sure, will never be released. We'll see about that. Let's investigate the disturbance. It sounded like a thunderclap. Or a pistol. I was still looking for the butler, the maid, the footman, anyone who could help. I didn't know what I was walking into. I didn't even know it was a bedroom. Now people are saying such malicious things that it was my fault that I shot those bullets. Out street is printing lies, nothing but lies. After the funeral, I thought about retiring to the tomb colonies just to get away from everything. But when I entered the West Wing that night, my life changed. The truth deserves to come out. The scandal is already here to stay. I found them together, Adam X and the Duke of Bedfordshire. And it all struck me at once, how this must look, how this must have happened before, what it meant. Those hunts in the prickfinger wastes, those salons every Tuesday. It took me a moment longer, however, to realise they weren't alone. 
The bed was shaking horribly. Something enormous was trapped underneath. Some gigantic animal. And it was trying to scramble out into the room. Let's look under the bed. How did it even fit? It must have folded itself up like a paper crane. Concord Square doesn't want to call it a murder, but that word describes how it felt. That's how it felt to me. I can't identify the animal. It was flapping its wings so powerfully, all the candles in the house blew out. But the Duke tried to chase it. What did he think he would do? He got into the gallery. He didn't have any weapons, so he hit it with the piece his wife had bought. That just seemed to make it angrier. Once it reached the garden, nobody could catch it again. Hmm. Well, then where did the gunshots come from if he didn't have a weapon? There's a little more here, the tall economist had said, but nobody's going to care about the rest. It took him some effort to wrestle the little more back into his briefcase. The pages kept cascading out. Isn't it amazing what people will do when they're in love? There are so many ways I could write about this. And here's the best part. Whatever I write, that will become the truth. Stories have power in London. They're transformative. We can revisit one last account. He started to set out fresh paper and ink. London doesn't know these people, the Tordy columnist had told you. As if the unwashed public is ever going to rub elbows with dukes and duchesses. They only know what I write. As far as they're concerned, I am the Duke, I am the Duchess, I'm even Madame X. His eyes, his teeth, his whole face was a grin. I'd like to hear things from your perspective too. We ironed out a few wrinkles already. Big ones. Just remember, I transcribe everything. What exactly did you say? Sometimes memory is so fickle. You received an invitation. Yes, yes, we've been over that part, said the tawdy columnist. Dancing, card games, fashionably late arrivals, unfashionable artwork. Is it even artwork? Doesn't matter, not important. He leaned across the table, face radiant with excitement, rather like a child leaning over a tiger's enclosure at the zoo. Let's get to the part where the vicar almost choked to death. The gong, yeah, just skip to the gong. When a gong summoned the guests to supper, how many guests did you actually know? Not nearly as many as you do today, but their faces surrounded the table in your memory. Lord and Lady J, the rubbery entrepreneur, the Duke and Duchess of Bedfordshire, the whiskered admiral, Madame X, and the loquacious vicar, just to name a few. You were sitting next to the vicar, weren't you? If anyone can remember what made him choke, it would be you. Oh, uh, what was it? Okay, three options. We can either say the poison did him in. The Duke of Bedfordshire blamed the wine. We can say hatchlings. According to Madame X, the imported caviar was responsible. Or jewels. Lady J said they were in the bat liver pate. Let's go with hatchlings. That's just the most disturbing possible way, isn't it? That's right, hatchlings. And not from any old eggs. Where did they truly come from? Did the chef mean to serve them? If someone to ask you... Wait, stop, said the tawdy columnist. Nobody's asking you. That would be speculation. And we're not in the business of speculating. We're in the business of reporting facts. Only the facts. Which brings us to the West Wing. I want to know what really happened there. In the kitchen, the cassock, the constable. Let's not muddy the war with too many facts. Everyone heard the commotion. The Duchess, of course, was still distracted in the gallery. Concord Square had yet to storm the drawing room. He had to step over the butler, who had fainted right there in the middle of the hall. But you saw them both enter the bedroom. Two people whose names aren't often printed together. Who? Oh. Asked the tawdy columnist, pen poised like a viper to strike his notebook. The uh, Duke of Bedfordshire and Madame X, Lady J, claimed that she saw them together. Uh, Madame X and Lady J, the Duke insisted that he discovered them, or Lady J and the Duke of Bedfordshire. Madame X used a term to describe a situation. 
in flagrante delicto. Hmm. The only lady whose story I didn't really like was... Lady J. She was the last person we talked to, was she not? So... Who with the second option here? That seems marvellously scandalous for the time period. It was only later that the Duke of Bedfordshire also arrived. You watched him open the bedroom door, and what he found is what you've just confirmed, cried the tawdy columnist. By that point, he was drooling openly. He had to wipe his lips with his sleeve. Perhaps he was less like a child looking into a tiger's enclosure at the zoo, and more like the tiger looking back. London's gonna love this. I'm gonna get a promotion. No, a promotion and a bonus. But they weren't alone in the room. Concord Square's investigation would uncover a trap door leading to a hidden chamber. Within this chamber, they would also uncover a cage with mangled bars and an astonishing quantity of Murgatroyd's fungal crackers. But you learned these details afterwards in the Gazette. On the evening itself, when the beast rampaged through the salon, you only caught glimpses in the darkened halls. What did you see? We could have legs, more than usual. The Duke said the creature belonged in a gigantic web. Uh, tentacles, so many tentacles, in the words of Madame X, or wings, flapping powerfully enough, according to Lady J, to blow out every candle. Go with tentacles. The loquacious vicar conducted Lord J's funeral. His wife, as she explained in her own account, had been touched by the vicar's speech at supper. The Duke and Duchess declined to appear, but the robbery entrepreneur attended. Madame X wore a ruby choker. So much for the famous Tuesdays. Although you were also present for the eulogy. The Tory columnist didn't ask you very much about the murder. In fact, he had started collecting his notes before the beast reached the garden. Following Concord Square's inclusive investigation, people assumed that it probably just got into the sewers with the rats. Your mind wanders back to the clipping in your hand. It was published the morning after your interview. Certain points of interest, including the chef's mistress, the schedule of the packet shipped to Vanderblight, and the fingerprints on the pistol, hadn't seemed to concern the tawdy columnist at all. They were already common knowledge at the time. What he printed was decidedly not common knowledge. Let's read the, the old clipping. Distillation is the journalist's art. Invited by the Duchess, as if Madame X wouldn't sink her salon. She may cooperate with legal authorities, but social authorities are clearly no concern for the notorious Madame. But with scandalous Turkish dances performed in her very ballroom, perhaps the Duchess has never rated society highly. Her lax attitude would certainly explain the six bullets. Has playing by the rules exhausted the Duke's patience for civility? He may claim to treat his staff well, but Tuesday's salon tells another story. We find it difficult to fault the kitchen for bad caviar, when, by all accounts, the servants were simply placating their boorish master. Others may distract the public with tales of a giant squid kept by the Duchess and the damage it wrought. But what damage compares to a broken heart? Dear reader, it gives us no pleasure to disclose the liaison between Madame X and Lady J, arranged that evening with the Duke's awareness and, we are forced to accept, his approval. But we have a duty to report the truth. Nor does it inspire confidence in Concord Square that a mere cassock, evidently misplaced in the laundry, has yet to be recovered. Well, it's time for us to step out. How the time flies. It all seems like so long ago, and yet it only seems like yesterday. Still, it's a good thing you kept this clipping. You've been able to recall salient details about the salon that you might have otherwise forgotten. Now that you've refreshed your memory, you have a very tangible reason, indeed, to attend the auction tonight, and wouldn't you know it, you happen to be on schedule. We can ride to the auction on King Charles Street. There is general interest in the Bedfordshire collection. 
and a crowd is expected, but most people won't know what's really on sale. Most people have no inkling. As you rattle through the city streets, you organize your thoughts. If this means that, then that means this, and so on. You trace the logical chain and arrive at precisely the right place, just as your carriage arrives at the auction. Bidding has already commenced. A couple of Elgin marbles, lots 12 and 13, Babache eggs, lots 20 through 28, tapestries from Vestia, 34, and the Carnet, 36. The Duchess had so many little trinkets, but they hadn't got to lot 77 yet, which gives you a moment to catch up with a few acquaintances first. Oh, they're all here. Oh my. Auctions in London are such interesting events. You never know what you might buy, unless you know exactly, and you never know who you might meet, although certain people make dependable appearances. This crowd is rather refined. Top hats, fur coats, monocles trained on the auctioneer's block, magnified eyes scrutinizing each item. You're here for lot 77, which the catalogue diplomatically refers to as unique. Oh, let's speak to all these people. We can speak to the Duke of Bedfordshire. Well, well, look who wants to buy something from his own wife's collection. How is the Duke doing tonight? He's doing well. He didn't know you would be here. You didn't know either, but you had a free evening. Is he still hunting bats? Yes, he's still hunting bats. In the wastes? In the wastes. With the same company? The Duke frowns. His wife is still in the tomb colonies, but she's doing well too. Doing better. She's, she's doing better. They write to each other. He sends her gifts. He thought he might buy something to remind her of old times, but now he looks at the time. It's so late. He's sorry he can't stay, but it was a pleasure to catch up. Speak with Madame X, surrounded by smitten admirers, as always. Are you sure? She doesn't remember at first. She knows so many people, and too many. But then you say something that makes her head turn. Something innocent, something friendly, something that makes her recall she should be somewhere else. She isn't here for herself anyway. She is representing Lord P as a buyer. But Lord P will just have to find someone new. How could she have possibly forgotten? She has tickets for Odin's horse tonight. Perhaps you'll see her again after the show. Perhaps she'll fall into the stolen river and a Z monster will eat her. Now, if you'll excuse her, she has an opera to withstand. And finally, Lady J. She's not in mourning anymore. In fact, Lord J is with her. Miraculous! Lord J is back in good health. Some deaths are harder than others, of course. All those legal issues with the coroner. Lady J looks well herself. And you look well yourself. Everyone looks marvellous. Perfect pictures of vitality. It's lucky that they found his missing foot. Where was it? In the end. Inside his shoe? But then, where was the shoe? Oh! On his foot! Lady J begs your pardon, but they they need to hail a hansom. They've already been here too long, and everything just costs so much. Well, if nobody else is interested, you might stand a chance of winning. Let's attempt to place a bid. How lovely. Your bid goes unchallenged. Lot 77 is yours. Promptly enough, you're back in another carriage, rattling over the cobbles again, bumping up and down with your new, newest purchase balanced on your knee. You pass clay men carting coal, bright-eyed young lovers, old married couples, fisher kings reeling a banker's stolen wig onto a roof. Nothing that you wouldn't see on any average day. There will be other auctions. The Bedfordshire collection is dispersed, with many pieces in many hands, but no other piece has a story like this one. Epilogue Salon Scandal will conclude its exceptional story. The Duchess of Bedfordshire once owned this piece. She displayed it proudly at her infamous salon. 
Now we can proudly gather dust stashed with the other mementos in your own collection. Before you put it away, however, and forget that you even have it, there is one last thing to do. You'll want to wear gloves. You'll also want to bolt the doors and draw the curtains. Precious few people would know how to extract its true value. Let's apply ourselves to a covert task. Even after all this time, you remember the steps. What are we doing? You have the tools. You have the techniques. All the newspapers reported six bullets, which the constable successfully retrieved as evidence. But six bullets? No. There were seven, of course. And the number makes all the difference. But the embedded bullet lodged at such a curious angle is just the first thing you extracted from the piece. What you find next is much more valuable. Smuggling charges indeed. If the public knew what you had actually brought, the truth would probably drive you into exile yourself. Fortunately, in this case, the truth isn't so easy to pin down. You have finished this exceptional story, and apparently we got a crackling device. I have no idea what this is. A very impressive thing of rotors and copper coils, liable to electrocute the unwary. Crackling device, a curiosity. These can be bought in the carnet. Well, that explains why I don't know it, because I've spent no time in the carnet. But either way, I'm going to end this here. So I'm going to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Salon Scandal. I enjoyed it quite a lot. It was like being in a murder mystery book. It was very fun indeed. A different take to what I would normally expect from an exceptional story, and that is always good. I like it when they experiment with different ideas. I hope you also enjoyed it too. I hope you know what the other options are. If anyone does know where the other things go, please let me know in the comments down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>